Now we're going to invite the for the lecture of by the Alexandra Karakostas of the USA. Her lecture topic is consulting of the 21st century. We need to learn how to consult it. So. Well, thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. It's an honor to be here, and I want to thank particularly Gopal and Alex and everyone who is in charge and responsible for making this wonderful event happen here. Let's, I'm just going to take a minute here just to be up here. and <clears throat> It's a little bright up here, but I'm happy to be here. You know, I'm t talking on this uh, subject here today. It's consulting in the 21st century. But it's really about consulting, which is a, a topic that's really close to my heart because it doesn't really matter what not body of knowledge we have. If we cannot communicate effectively with others, then it doesn't do much good. It's not, it doesn't become useful. So um, I also want to say I, have a, I wanted to kind of communicate quite a bit here today, so I apologize in advance because I will be reading some of my lecture to you, which is not really what I prefer to do, but I'm going to do it. So what is it that we need to know in the 21st century today in order to be effective and good counselors? Let's see if I can make this thing work here. Yes. How might we need to change our methods in order to meet the demands of today's quickly changing world? Today I wanted to present three subjects for consideration. One is personal relations, the other is technology, and the other one is what I am calling the Saturn-Uranian dialectic. In these changing times, social constructs shift very quickly due to technology and the information and ease of relocation, mixing and fusing divergent cultures and customs, particularly in the West. Consulting skills are part science, part skill set, and part knowing our audience, who our clients are. We're hopefully not going to talk exactly the same way to all of the people that come see us, because it depends on what it is, who they are. Um, today, we live in a global community where various ethnic issues and cultural differences are factors that we must negotiate. The technological advances that we have really add much to this mix. Being an astrological consultant is a people business at its core. Empathy and social skills play a major role in being a wise advisor. I myself am a Western astrologer, though I make every effort here to not really advocate one tradition over another. We all are consultants if we're working with clients. And, um, Consulting skills are, yeah, are applicable to all of us, but it's, again, it's not enough to just know astrology. There are many considerations in reaching our clients. Communication is at the basis of every interpersonal relationship. Each individual must be able to understand one another in order to communicate. The words that we choose, our body language, um, our pitch, everything conveys some information. Just one wrong word or even sometimes just a wrong look to someone can really sort of derail us from what it is that we want to communicate. This is also a professional relationship. We must be prepared, we must be timely, we must be courteous and presentable. I think this is all part of what it is that we're communicating. And most of all, we need to be good listeners. I don't know about you all, but I know I have been to uh, astrologers and other kinds of advisors that are very eager to give me a lot of information, but not so eager to listen to what I have to say. And I, as the client, count a lot. So how can we be most useful in this age when there are so many different cultural threads and fragments woven into kaleidoscopes? Regardless of our astrological orientation, we're all can gr we can all greatly benefit by sharpening our listening skills and listening to others. We need to know what, their ex what our client's experience is. We need to ask questions. Through the internet, we have access to more information than we can ever use. It's seductive, and it can rob us of being in present time. 
it's easy to get lost. I don't know about you all, but it's easy for me to get lost in the myriad of information that is available to us today. And it's complicating, our, complicating life. An overabundance of ideas and words are not always helpful. In fact, I really believe that given the complexities of life in general, it's best to keep it simple. That's certainly one of my mottos. More words are definitely not better. More is not better. Less is often more. So what is our role and purpose as astrologers? Certainly, it's to be helpful to those we interact. And how can we be most helpful? I think that the response to this question is undoubtedly depends on the people that we're working with, their country of origin, their religious background, their, um, their culture. All of that stuff plays a role. And there's, there are even more issues today that we need to consider, and I'll touch upon them. So there is an underlying understanding of our clientele that we, that we must grasp. Today's world is very diverse. In fact, uh, during the next 50 years in the United States alone, according to the U.S. Census Bureau, um, there will no longer be one racial or ethnic majority in the country that I live in currently, which is the United States. Um, the diversity encountered in the modern world today demands a lot of sensitivity as we encounter all kinds of people on our path and access to and skillful use of a broad set of professional tools. And our profession, astrology, is no exception with its many permutations that serve many ends. Our ability to view situations and circumstances from different perspectives is essential especially when working across cultural divides. We must re-examine our, our biases. Mindfulness, awareness, compassion, and a non-judgmental attitude increase the opportunity for healing in any kind of counseling. This includes an awareness of our own predispositions on politics, philosophy, sexuality, karma, whatever it might be. Most astrologers today, we use, um, no matter what area we're working in, we use um, one or more of the latest digital tools that we have available to us and applications. Technology is changing our world at an astonishing pace. When we entered the 21st century a few years, several years ago now, it was unthinkable that our phones right here would become our mini computers, just what Steve Jobs wanted us to have and keep us connected to the world in so many ways. But technology has been around for a long time. The Antikythera, is, it, is anyone familiar with this particular piece of, yeah. The Antikythera mechanism is a 2,000 year old computer which they found off the coast of Greece, I think it was about 20 years ago. This was uh, dating back to 15, about 1500, 2000 BC. And this mechanism had 37 gear wheels, enabling it to follow the movements of the moon and the sun through the zodiac. And it also predicted eclipses and even modeled the irregular orbit of the moon. Today we have our personal computer. Additionally, the globe is littered with all kinds of ancient, these are just but a few of the ancient astronomical observatories and sites that focus um, a great technological attention and effort th that man has made over time with limited technology to connect ourselves to the cosmos. These are excellent also examples of some ancient astronomical technology. But the majority of the masses didn't have access to these accomplishments as we do today. Much has changed. <laughs> Even as little as 13 centuries, generations, I'm sorry, ago, astronomy and astrology were united as a science. Technology existed, but telescopes had only just arrived. Astrologers slash astronomers were passionately involved in observing the night sky and the heavens, a practice which basically we can avoid altogether today due to the use of, of uh, telescopes 
I'm sorry, due to the use of our computers, and some of us live in big cities that we don't even get to see the stars sometimes. We don't get to observe. And there's a lot of astrologers that really, we don't know, I mean, not all astrologers know astronomy anymore. Historically, an astrologer would be with his client or his students in a room, hand drawing charts, and um, studying the charts, and recommendations would be made. Um, back then, in, historically, to be an astrologer, and actually probably a whole bunch of us too. I mean, up until the, I mean, up until like the 80s, I was still hand drawing charts. I mean, I actually was a pretty good mathematician. But back then, you really had to be even better to produce all kinds of uh, mathematical calculations. Today, just about anyone can input information in a computer and, and c come out with complex and accurate astrological charts. Since the previous conjunction of Saturn and Uranus in 1988, there have been tremendous shifts and changes in our global and social structures. During this new phase cycle, modern society entered a new digital age. Common people could now afford computers, thus forever changing life as we knew it. Becoming connected to the larger world influenced our beliefs and expectations. Technology has opened us up to a new universe. A few years later, we had the Uranus-Neptune conjunction in Aquarius. This is a, in Western astrology. And the internet, internet and information superhighway became fundamental, fundamentally accessible to all of us. Technology again changed all the rules, empowering many otherwise marginalized or disenfranchised people. Revelations about our past morphed into questions about our future, and our profession lends itself to talking about the past, the present, and the future really well. For astrologers, the way we related to our clients was for, transformed. We've gone from spending hours on a few mathematical calculations to generate a limited data set to being able to nuance infinite, an infinity of possibilities with charts and angles in mere moments. Today, we use computers and phones to conduct business anywhere on the planet. In moving forward, we'll be stretching our boundaries and comfort zones as we continue to adapt and embrace new ways of living. Effectively managing these resources is important in optimizing their potential. As computers continue to enhance our lives in so many ways, we must not lose sight of our humanness and everything that connects us to one another. After all, we see aspects of ourselves in each other, which can contribute to our compassion and love for one another. And no computer can do that. So again, as consultants, we need to be human regardless of what kind of technology we have available to us. We need to be human, we need to connect to our heart. And in fact, I often tell my clients, or I often tell myself, just to you know, touch my heart, put my hand on my heart, because it's so easy to get locked up up here where it's just about sharing information without really connecting it to what's really going on for the other person and for ourselves. Okay, so this is, I wanted to touch a little, like I said at the beginning, a little bit about the Saturnian and Uranian dialectic. So in, in the, for, this, for this purpose, the way I'm using this is, um, I guess from one particular perspective, we can generalize about what can be termed Saturn versus Uranian or Aquarian societies or cultures. This concept distinguishes between two broad cultural threads. The first is more historically traditional and cultured, um, I'm sorry, structured with strong family, strong community, cultural, uh, religious, religious, and where astrological divination is oriented really to the family, the future, and outcomes. The second, in contrast, is more modern, with weaker family and community systems, where the focus is on the individual and one's own inner landscape, our own psychology, I guess, if you, our own uh, spirituality, psychology, our personal world. Considering the complexities of today's world, we can see the interplay of either or both of these at any given time. Saturn is associated with cultures that, have, that favor long-established cust, customs and values. 
as they said, strong family systems. Historically, the traditional family unit was at the center of social organization and basic to community life. The basic unit, the identity of the individual was subordinated to the family. The approach was sensible and practical and ultimately necessary for the survival of the members of that community. And this, was, this held true for both patriarchal and matriarchal societies. In this kind of culture, astrology tends to be a bit more predictive, future event-oriented. In Uranian or Aquarian culture, society, the traditions uh, that, are based, uh, that were based on faith are, no longer make sense. A Uranian influence society promotes individuality, progressive ideas, and independence, not so locked into the family unit. It's inclined towards unconventional or nonconformist views and behaviors with a sharp departure from established norms and values. Uranian energy greets the unknown, helping individuals and their communities attain new levels of freedom. In Uranian-type societies, family patterns, dynamics, and customs have shifted enormously. Today, the core of Uranian community revolves around people with like-minded views and chosen family members. In these cultures, astrology tends toward personal growth and evolution. The United States is a good example of a society that includes both Saturnian and Aquarian dynamics manifesting in a variety of different subcultures. The family structure in the United States as an example, has changed tremendously in the last 60 years, evolving from traditional origins to its current rather dismembered state. As economic and educational opportunities have bridged wider segments of the population, including the gender gap, breaking with the past has become inevitable. Family units have become smaller, broke up, divided by distances internally, as well as, as externally. The pathos of the individual has become paramount as isolation has advanced. Europe, much like the USA, is a striking mix of traditional and modern cultures, with the northern countries being a bit more Uranian than the southern counterparts, who are a little more Saturnian still. Various combinations, of course, are found in every continent today, especially in larger cities and metropolitan areas. As a Greek American, and even though I have uh, clients all over the globe, I also have a lot of Greek clients. And particularly when I'm there, when I have an appointment with a client, the client will come to see me armed with the birth data of their children and their parents and their spouses, and they want me to address the entire family unlike my clients elsewhere, and certainly in the United States. They're interested in their children's or family's health, financial future, prosperity, um, the marriage outcomes, will they be happy? This is a question we get asked often, you know, will my children be happy? I usually want to say, well, I don't know, which is the truth. I try not to say that, but I also try to give some answer. But I don't know. Uh, they're not particularly interested in their own inner process like we, certainly in the United States, are. Almost to a degree that is isolating and I think unhealthy. We become too self-involved. But there's little separation. My point is that there's little separation between the individual and the family unit. In cultures where older traditions are still alive, there is a greater emphasis placed on destiny. In more traditional or Saturnian cultures, there is less emphasis on free will and choice and more emphasis on preordained future of sorts. This I, we call the event-oriented approach to astrology. A good illustration of traditional astrology is the topic of arranged marriages. According to data research conducted just about a year and a half ago by UNICEF and the Human Rights Council, the percent of marriages in the world, I was surprised, is still at 
of the world has arranged marriages. And in India, that percentage goes up to 88.4% are arranged marriages. I mean, this is impressive, especially to us in the West. But what's also impressive is that certainly in India, there's a much lower than average divorce rate. The good news. In information-based societies, humanistic or person-centered astrology, what we call that, is practiced more widely, though traditional approaches have certainly gained a lot more favor in, in recent years. Person-centered astrology is a, uh, a term that was coined by the late, uh, by late um, uh, Dane Ruger and presents astrology. He said, quote, um, a living and practical philosophy of psychological fulfillment and integration, unquote. Though several books on this subject were written earlier in the 20th century, this study of astro this style of astrology gained popularity, especially in the 60s and 70s, as young people, particularly in the West, began to explore themselves through Eastern philosophies, seeking transcendent states of consciousness and awareness. Our inner journey for personal fulfillment was alive and well in the exploration of the self. This type of astrology focuses on and articulates individual growth and evolution, the potentials and propensities, and life purpose. It uses our horoscope as a map to address our personal considerations, to understand ourselves better, and not necessarily for the benefit of our family. We can say that this kind of astrology has Uranian leanings because it supports individuation. In general, the more information and education made available to the masses, the more likely that society will want to grow into the future, stepping away from the past and familiar territory. This is neither good nor bad. It's simply the result of the creative pursuit of individuation and freedom. Choices are made more likely, choices made are more likely to favor individual progress, placing less weight on our family. The significance of the discussion of Saturnian versus Uranian society is that it's important to remember the audience that we're serving, and this is, part, this is why I'm addressing it, the expectations and capacities for understanding. It's most likely that clients that we consult will choose us because there is a common ground. They, most people that will come to me will be because they're interested in the kind of work that I do, just like with most of you. But on occasion, as I said, that's not how it works. That's not what we get. So it's really important that regardless of our cultural family background, um, th that we are sensitive to the cultural traditions, the biases, the family systems, the gender issues that come into question today. There's a whole plethora of issues that we have to deal with in a more objective and compassionate fashion. So we can negotiate the complex society that we live in. Regardless of the tools of our trade, consulting remains vital in our profession. We must learn to negotiate all of these perspectives and expectations, and while applying astrological tools. Irrespective of our astrological orientation, we're, students, we're all students of the human psyche and its unfolding cycles. And uh, I really love this saying. Astrology continues to have a very, very valuable role in our society, especially in the changing of ages that we find ourselves in today. The world needs us, personally and collectively, staying connected to our hearts and one another, recognizing our fallibilities, and always displaying openness to life and humility will make us better astrologers. And no matter what century we live in, and we must always remember, I feel, that life is an inside job. In conclusion, consulting astrology is a people-centered profession. We are astrologers, counselors, and advisors. Interpersonal skills and sensitivities are needed to address the extraordinary cultural mix found in today's world. Altogether, being professional, 
we must negotiate a lot. <laughs> and um, really endeavor to be present wherever we find ourselves and whomever we're with. And with that, I want to end and thank you for indulging me.